This video is going to give you a basic introduction to what we call the normal distributions. So in your reading, when you read about density curves, pages 67 to 72 of the Moore textbook, you'll learn about density curves that they originated from histograms. You'll learn what the two main requirements of density curves are. You'll learn the different shapes that a density curve can take on. And you'll learn how to find the mean and the median of a density curve. The best known density curve that we talk about in statistics are the normal distributions. The, the shape of the normal distribution is bell-shaped and symmetrical, but there are different variations of bell-shaped. If you look at the green curve is a normal curve, the blue curve is a normal curve, it's much skinnier and taller, and the orange curve is also a normal curve, it's kind of flat and wide. Those are all different bell-shaped normal curves. And you see that there is a mean and a standard deviation given for each of those curves. It's the mean and the standard deviation which are going to determine the shape of the bell curve, and it is all the information you need to determine the shape of the bell curve if you have a normal distribution. So some examples of norma that, of data that tend to be normally distributed. The heights of men. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, the average height for an adult male in the United States is 5 feet 9.2 inches. And that from there it follows a normal bell curve. Pregnancy duration. According to the National Vital Statistics System in 2005, the mean gestational age for singletons was 38.7 weeks or 9.675 months. Now some properties of the normal distribution are that it's symmetric and bell-shaped. Okay, so it's always going to look something like this. You'll see me draw a lot of bell curves and they're all going to look, they're supposed to look symmetric, mine don't always look symmetric, but they're, they're always bell-shaped. The curve's bell shape, whether it's tall and skinny or shorter and flatter and wider, that's all determined by the mean and the standard deviation. The total area under a normal curve is 1 or 100 percent, just like any density curve. And the x-axis, that horizontal axis, acts as a horizontal asymptote for the normal curve. The word asymptote, it just means that the curve gets really, really close to it. So you can see here how it's getting closer and closer and closer to this line I've drawn at the bottom. That's the x-axis, that line at the bottom. The curve gets closer and closer and closer to that, but it never ever touches it. That's what it means to be an asymptote. With normal curves we have what's called the 68-95-99.7 rule. It's also in other texts called the empirical rule. So if you see that elsewhere, it's the same thing. And all that says is that in a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, the Greek letter mu for mean, the Greek letter sigma for standard deviation, we know certain things about where the data lies. C 
68% of the data, well over half of the data, is within one standard deviation. Within one standard deviation of the mean. That means if you take the mean and you add the standard deviation, and you take the mean and you subtract the standard deviation, 68% of the data approximately will fall in that range. Now if we go for 95% of the data, that happens within two standard deviations. So now if you multiply the standard deviation by 2 and subtract it from the mean and add it to the mean, 95% of your data sits in that range. And then 99.7% of the data, almost all of it, is within three standard deviations of the mean. Now, Iowa test scores for 947 seventh graders are approximately normal with a mean of 6.84 and a standard deviation of 1.55. That tells us that of all the seventh graders that take this, let's see how many of them. Uh, what score range has 99.7% of those 7th graders falling in that score range? Well, if we take 3 times 1.55, we will get 15, 16, 4.65. And if we subtract that from 6.84, we'll get 2. Point one nine all the way up to eight point three nine. So that's our range that has ninety nine point seven percent of all those seventh graders to take the Iowa test. Now some properties of the standard normal curve. Again, it's symmetric and bell-shaped. But the standard normal curve, as opposed to just any old normal curve, is this one right here. The standard normal has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The notation for any normal curve is that it's normal with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. So a standard normal, we use the capital letter N, mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So that's what we mean here, thus this. And just like any other normal curve, the total area under that curve is equal to 1. Now the standard normal curve is the one that we're going to use all the time as we use normal curves. And the neat thing that we can do is we can take any, stand, any normal curve and we can standardize it using this formula right here. And we get what we call a z-score for our x. So x is just some data value from a distribution that we have. And we can put it on our normal curve with whatever mean and standard deviation it has. But then if we standardize it to get our z-score, what we will do is we will find what point on the standard normal curve 
is at the same point that our x is at on its normal curve. So the example we're going to use to figure out how to do this is IQ scores. They're approximately normal, so we're just going to call it a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And we're going to take some IQ scores and we're going to standardize them. Okay. So for a person whose IQ is 85, we'll have a Z score of Z equals 85 minus 100 divided by 15. It's extremely important that you do that numerator in the correct order because it matters whether you're on the positive side or the negative side. The negative side is left of that mean of zero, and the positive side is on the right of that mean of zero. So here for the first one, our z is going to be equal to negative 15 over 15, which is negative 1. The second one, we have a person whose IQ is 130. For that person, z is 130 minus 100 divided by 15. Again, x minus mu, the mean, over the standard deviation, 15. And that's going to give us 130 minus 100 is 30. Divide that by 15 and you have 2. The last one here, z equals 105 minus 100 over 15. So z equals 5 over 15, which is 1 third, which is approximately 0.33. So that's how we take a point on a normal curve and standardize it. Now to go the other way, if we have a standardized IQ score of negative 1.57, and we want to know what X gave us that. In, act in other words, what is their IQ score? that gave us that. What is the x from this formula? Minus 100 over 15 so when we multiply we will get negative 23.55 I multiplied, maybe I should write that out, I multiplied both sides by 15 those 15's will cancel out. And 15 times negative 1.57 is negative 23.55. And that equals x minus 100. And then if I add 100 to both sides, what am I going to get when I do that? I'll get 100 minus 23.55 minus 23, 76.45. So the x value that gave me a standardized score of negative 1.57 was 76.45.